great turnout today, and it's uh, it's very very reassuring. Thank you. Um, why are you here today? Why are we here today? Uh, since it was first formed in July 2015, the Port of the Lakes Culture and Heritage Roundtable Committee has met with the mayor, CAO, councillors, and city staff to promote the economic benefits of developing the city's cultural sector. These meetings and countless hours of volunteer time have resulted in the development of the City of Port Lake's Culture and Heritage Task Force. The task force has a number of objectives, and one of those objectives is to obtain information from other municipalities towards the implementation of city support for the cultural sector in the Port of the Lakes. And your attendance today speaks to the interest in that, so we thank you for being here today. We're here today to listen to a selection of municipalities to learn how they support their cultural stock uh, sector. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have two live presenters, um, <laughs> Melissa from Norfolk and Evelyn from Chatham Kent, and Emily, who is here via uh, telephone. These particular municipalities were chosen based on the population, rural environment, and the fact that they are all single-tier municipalities. Hopefully, listening to the challenges and successes of others will aid us in implementing changes to better our community's economic health. And before we start, I'd like to introduce Pat Dunn. Pat is the chair of the task force committee, and I'd like to invite him to come up and say a few words. Uh, I'm absolutely touched by that to see this many people here because um, in order to move our program forward we have to show the city that there's a true interest. Uh, an audience like this is going to send that message out loud and clear. If we're going to advance art and culture as, um, as an economic force, uh, at some point the city has to become involved. And by your presence here you're telling the city too often. So thank you very, uh, very much, and uh, have a good meeting. Thank you, Pat. And at this time, I'm going to ask the minister to come forward. Uh, one of the goals of the Arts Council is advocacy, and the opportunity to create the new Cultural and Heritage Roundtable was a great chance to bring a much broader uh, part of the community together and involve the municipalities, uh, the senior staff, and uh, patrons of the arts. So. I'm also a member of that uh, cultural roundtable, and I'd like to thank Susan Taylor, who chairs that. She's quite modest, uh, for actually uh, energizing us and bringing this event together. Uh, we've been working very, very closely with uh, Deborah Soul, who's here, who's really been our partner at the staff level to bring these kinds of activities to the community. Um, my uh, great pleasure this morning is to introduce our moderator, Harvey Kalodney. Uh, Harvey uh, has been a friend of mine. I used to live in Dufferin County uh, in Mulmer Township, and we went through similar kinds of activities in terms of community engagement. It's a very rich arts and heritage uh, culture in that part of Ontario. He's the past president, immediate past president, of the Dufferin Arts Council. So like Platt, which is only a year old, uh, our Arts Council in Fourth Lakes, the Dufferin Arts Council is 24 years old. It has 400 members. It offers community arts programming at no cost to the community, and it also uh, goes into 23 local schools and offers art programs by the local artists. Harvey is also a former director of the Mono Mulmer, those are the two townships, <coughs> Citizens Coalition, uh, and the Headwaters Tourism Association. And he's a current uh, corporate director with Vivosonic Inc., which is a medical devices manufacturing company in Toronto. He also coordinates, he's the chair of the Headwaters Cultural Roundtable. So like the roundtable that's brought this event to, to the city today, um, Harvey has played a similar role uh, in uh, Southern Ontario, just west of us. <coughs> he's a retired professor emeritus from the Rockwell School of Management and the Department of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering at the University of Toronto after 30 years of teaching and leading and research at the university. He's a former director in, of the full and part-time MBA program at the Rotman School. He currently directs the Rotman Consulting Organization on behalf of the National Research Council of Canada that assists small and medium-sized organizations in management advice. 
articles in electronics engineering degree, an MBA, and a doctorate in management. His research interests include organizational design and change and innovative workplace practices. I had to cry this out of the party. <laughs> very modest. And I'm so glad that my friend is here today to help moderate, and I will not turn over the party. Thank you for inviting me. Um, this is, um, I was here last, evening, uh, last night and met some of the uh, councillors from North and Lakes uh, Council. I met members of the and all, these, all these different um, committees. I met members of the Kawartha Lakes Culture and Heritage Roundtable, the Kawartha Lakes Arts Council, the Kawartha Lakes Heritage Network, and the City of Kawartha Lakes Culture and Heritage Task Force. And I think you're very lucky to have all these uh, committees, especially pulling in the same direction, and work with artists who never go in the same direction. It's really nice to see everybody moving in the same direction. I hope it continues to do that. Um, when we moved up to Dufferin, Count to Dufferin County, um, my wife and I, 18 years ago, we got involved with the Dufferin Arts Council. And, uh, and we became more and more involved and I ended up spending about 10 years in different positions on the board. And in those positions I was able to also get involved with all the other arts organizations in Dufferin County and we have a lot of them and, and a lot of really good arts organizations. And, and through that process eventually ended up um, working with the town of Orangeville, which is the major town and, and uh, the major urban place in Dufferin County. We ended up uh, working on the development of a cultural plan for the town of Orangeville. And, uh, and that, that plan is a very ambitious plan and it's, it's really moving ahead very well. But we engaged uh, a few consulting organizations to help us develop that plan and, and they came up with a lot of interesting data. And I'd just like to take a couple of minutes to share that data with you. Uh, the the um, cultural activity in Orangeville and Dufferin County generated in 2013 376 full-time equivalents of employment, $10.2 million of labor income, and $12.6 million of gross domestic product, just in, in that one year. Uh, attendance at cultural uh, venues and festivals was over 72,000 uh, in 2013. The annual Blues and Jazz Festival alone attracted 34,000 visitors. And this is going on year after year after year. It's been 14 years now for blues and jazz. So, so you, you really see the, the tremendous economic impact of uh, arts and culture to, uh, to the Dufferin County and to the Headwaters area that Diane has mentioned. But uh, culture is more than economic activity. And, and just to cite a few examples, Theater Orangeville, in addition to their, their very successful theater programs, for the past 20 years has conducted plays for intellectually disabled adults. And when you go to one of these sessions, and there's, they, they happen twice a year for three different e evenings, and it, 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 you, you walk out of there and you're walking 10 feet high to, to watch mentally disabled people find themselves on the stage. It, it is so, it is so rewarding. Um, uh, theater Orangeville conducts workshops for kids with autism. Uh, they conduct music and theater training for literally thousands of children and young people in the community. The Dufferin Arts Council that I'm part of for the past 10 years has provided 2,000 hours of art days to the county's 23 elementary schools. We've given out over $102,000 in scholarships to secondary school students. So that combination of economic activity and social activity has really made our community one that people want to live in. The quality of life is, is a really important factor for all of us, and this combination of economic activity and, and social activity is what is what gives us a meaningful quality of life. <coughs> so we're going to start the program. We're running a little behind. We're going to start to catch up. And we'll begin with uh, Emily uh, Trotte from the Greater Seven. Hi there. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you uh, very much for having me today. Big shout out to Andrea for reaching out anytime these opportunities to connect are 
are coordinated, it makes our, our big country feel a bit smaller, our big province feel a bit smaller, and especially when we work um, in small cultural services departments with the municipality. We, uh, we're, we're able to either share best practices and feel a, a lot less alone, so thank you for having me. And I might be wrong here, but it feels like we were one of the last few cities to get a cultural plan together. Um, there was a big push from the province to uh, conduct cultural plans through the Creative Community Prosperity Fund a few years ago. Um, and Sudbury so took advantage of those funds to conduct a cultural mapping exercise in 2011, before I started my role with the city. I started here about four years ago, and there's been a lot of movements, I can say, probably before I started, and I'm sure there will be afterwards. But I'll share with you a little bit about our cultural planning process, and we're one year in. Our cultural plan was endorsed unanimously, we're happy to say, by council, our, our new council that come in, came into, uh, into office in 2014. Um, so we're one year in, and we can share with you a little bit about uh, the successes so far and some learnings along the way. Um, so, next slide, please. And, and just to, to let you know, too, um, I think it really matters where cultural services were, reside. Where does it sit within a municipality? Is it on the corner of somebody's desk? Is it a dedicated department? Is it within parks and leisure? Um, or is it within economic development? And here in Sudbury, um, my role is within economic development. I'm a business, de business development officer, specifically for the arts and culture sector. Um, but we also have arts and culture related programming delivered through leisure services, uh, libraries and heritage resources, and support from other departments. But we have approximately, I guess depends on the day, 1.5 full-time equivalent people dedicated to arts and culture. So my portfolio involves uh, being a film liaison for the city, administering a granting program, and uh, a few other things. Other duties of the same, though. So uh, just, as I mentioned, a quick recap. Um, plan was launched May 4th, 2015. Um, and since then, it kind of, we did things backwards up here. Um, our consultants was identified as a sector priority in from the ground up, which, are, which is our economic development um, strategic plan, as well as our council strategic plan. But both of those came into, into effect after the cultural plan was developed. So, like I said, usually a cultural plan would, would come forward from um, council direction, but just based on, on how timing took place, we developed the cultural plan and then it rolled up into other uh, municipal municipal plans. And just that, that number on the slide there, 87% public support. I think that's a really key number um, that we need to put front and center within our municipality. And I'm not sure how many people over there in the fourth of Lake have, have been to Sudbury, but we're, um, we're an amalgamated municipality, um, amalgamated in 2001. Um, we're very spread out. We have about a third of our population in Frank's phone. About 100% of people in the Sudbury will complain about potholes and love hockey. <laughs> um, we have a very strong arts and culture community, but sometimes people say, well, if it's going to come, push to shove, it's either going to be fixing my pothole or funding the arts. I want my pothole fixed. So when we did a random poll survey, um, you know, calling people up during dinner and asking them uh, a number of questions, it was astonishing to see that such a vast majority of people agreed that the city of Greater Sudbury should be supporting our culture and heritage organizations. So um, I, I think that that number probably, in large part, led to the um, unanimous approval of the plan. When we did our consultation, and we, we were able to reach out in one way or another to over 1,600 people um, over process that I thought was going to last about three months, but ended up taking about two years. Things really started slotting into four distinct areas around identity, people, places, and economy. And when we're talking about um, having best practices from other municipalities, I think we really relied on some of the plans that have already been around. Uh, the next slide on creative economy is, uh, is really key. Like I said, that, that, that. Um, it's interesting to see that um, cultural activities contribute almost 4% of Ontario's GDP. Uh, we're looking forward to doing an impact assessment 
assessment for our local, um, not just economics, but social impacts as well, so we can get some local figures which are currently readily available. What are the key outcomes that you've achieved as a result of, of, of everything that you've invested to date? In general, I think uh, one of the, the, the biggest ones that we're seeing right now is uh, partnerships. We're seeing groups who sometimes didn't talk with each other. I wouldn't really say it's all of the results of our cultural forums, but um, we're encouraging partnerships. Let me ask uh, one last question. Um, you said that uh, the, the cultural plan was kind of developed first and then put before council. Uh, how, how did you go about getting council on board? They were on board from day one. Uh, I think they didn't take too much convincing for the bulk of them to see the value of our culture and heritage in the community and being very engaged with the community. They, they can see that firsthand. Um, but just in case there are any folks who don't see the value, I think that having that economic and the staff and showing the return on the investment, um, I think that's, that's really key. Our next presenter is Evelyn Bish from uh, the municipality of Chatham-Kent. Evelyn is the Director of Community Attraction and Leisure Services. Her bio is on the last page of that handout that you have. to answer the five questions, and I'll start off with question one. Uh, Chatham-Kent's investment in culture and heritage. In Chatham-Kent, we're very fortunate that our council understands that investment in culture and heritage is a key factor in the present and future econ economic vitality of our municipality. They understand the importance of a growing creative economy, and that by investing in arts and culture, it has helped, and will continue to help to create jobs and to make our community more exciting for existing residents. It will also attract businesses and our target population groups, which are immigrants, younger families, and active retirees. We, like several other communities, and I'm sure what has been experienced here in Fort Lakes, have lost our large manufacturing businesses and are looking to reinvent ourselves by building our economic base in advanced manufacturing and agriculture and by finding ways to grow our culture and tourism industries. We know that by investing in arts and culture, it has helped us to develop Chatham Kent's unique character and identity. It provides a quality of place in which to tell our stories, thus differentiating <coughs> ourselves from other regions. We see creativity and culture as central to what, make, what makes a community in which people wish to live, work, play, and invest. We see our creative and cultural industries as important and expanding sources of employment and economic growth. We see culture as a foundation of our shared identity as a municipality. We see a dynamic cultural tourism destination built on strong cultural attractions and our unique history and identity as a community. We see the authenticity and vitality of our downtowns as essential cultural and economic assets. We value and support strong cultural organizations working together towards shared purposes. And we value creativity and culture as tools for celebrating diversity and fostering inclusion. Uh, the 2007 Cultural Master Plan, similar to Court the Lakes 2013 Cultural Master Plan, we completed ours back in 2007. I believe we were one of the first. It was very detailed and in-depth and involved uh, way over 200 volunteers from all of Chatham Kent intricately involved with it. The plan outlined the importance of investing in culture and most particularly recommended hiring a coordinator to work with volunteers to develop culture development initiatives through all of Chatham Kent. We were successful in hiring a temporary coordinator for three years, but after that we were not able to secure a full-time position. As a result, individual communities were on their own to develop their culture initiatives. Some were successful, while others, and I would say most, were not, because they did require staff support and resources. <coughs> then in 2014, we uh, had another culture plan done. This council asked us to update the two previous plans, as I think we've done here as well, and to combine all of the recommendations into one. 
And through this process, we're actually able to restructure the culture area to create a culture development coordinator position. This position will be responsible for several important initiatives. Uh, most importantly, the uh, creation of an independent independent arts council, which is similar to what you're doing here, so I'm very interested to be here and hearing what everybody's doing. And uh, seeking out grant opportunities. Um, certainly when I hear the 750,000, I'm like, oh my gosh, we don't do anything like that. But uh, certainly this position will be responsible for doing those types of things. Uh, now with tourism, in uh, 2015 we did a tourism destination plan. And cultural tourism, you know, they're all kind of related together. So I thought I would mention that our tourism stakeholders, we have many, many tourism businesses and organizations in Chattanooga. They were very disillusioned and fragmented up until we brought them together and involved them in our tourism plan. And now that they're very supportive and they're pleased with the direction we're going in. So again, this is a great example of the importance of involving businesses, organizations, and volunteers in a meaningful way. Question three, the overview of our culture and heritage departments and how it's funded. Our new division is entitled Community Attraction and Leisure Services. We thought that was kind of catchy. And uh, in regards then to culture and heritage specifically, under the manager of recreation culture, we place more of the facility type of, of culture pieces. So the cultural center, our art space, Milner House and Ridge House Museum. And that's because we figured that with recreation programs and culture programs and facilities, they could share that part of it. And then under the manager of community attraction and promotion, we place marketing and branding, resident retention and attraction, tourism, culture development, the Capitol Theater, and the Convention Center. Now we're a little more unique in that right now our economic development department is actually under our CAO. Um, our key outcomes achieved as a result of our investment dollars. Um, at high level, I believe we've achieved five outcomes. We're recognized nationally for several of our facilities, and this all helps to promote our community. We have a stronger sense, number two, we have a stronger sense of community pride, identity, and ownership. And even with complications of amalgamation, we're more defined as to who we are as a community, which helps set the table for future generations. Number three, we have a stronger volunteer base. Number four, attendance at facilities, programs, and events has increased. And number five, for our culture and tourism development initiatives, we're going to assist establishing sustainable business programs and events, which will help improve our economy. Questions for Evelyn? With both of these presentations, I'm starting to wonder what the word culture means. Uh, because um, it's such a broad term. Do you have an actual definition of what the word culture means? We do, and I won't be able to repeat it to you, but I actually won't even remember. But uh, it's basically all about your unique identity as a community. And that's, that, that's a very, very high level. And what does it take to promote your unique identity as a community? The culture is all about your people and your stories that you tell. It's, uh, this isn't the first type of question like this. Uh, I know our council grappled with it as well, and we did our best to provide a definition of culture. It's, uh, it's, it's a little bit more nebulous, and uh, I think each, each individual municipality actually needs to develop its own framework around what that term actually means for them. Thank you. Uh, do you uh, work with an arts council? Do you have an arts council or a cultural and heritage roundtable as these other larger groups of volunteers that partner with the municipality? Not yet. Does everybody at the back hear the question? Um, we don't actually have any groups set up yet, and so that's when we get our staff person on. That person will be responsible for starting to, to, to get some of these committees together. We do have a few volunteers who have stepped up. Uh, we've taken a look at the culture plan, and we've tried to start getting a, um, an actual uh, group together. Uh, so this is like a transition team that will start setting up this independent. And we thought we would do it as a a not-for-profit independent group separate from the municipalities so they can collect their grants. Uh, but we, we're just not there yet. So it works, and that's why it's so exciting for us to see what, what you can give you all our yeah, you know. yeah, that's great. That's actually what we're doing right now is vital. So, yeah, so we're not quite there yet. Yeah. All of these municipalities, including ours, face the same challenges in that they've lost 
jobs, manufacturing. So you made a key point about communities reinvesting or reinventing, sorry, themselves, right? Is it fair to say that, and, and I quite liked your comment on a hard sell to council, which is fully understandable. Is it fair to say that if councils in municipalities like ours across the province or across the country look at culture and heritage and arts, does that investment ultimately translate into a healthier economy, jobs for the young people, or or is it is the key to it, for example, is that drawing tourism and that people from outside your municipality to discover what you define as your cultural identity? Because the bottom line is, hopefully this will, the investment in it will bring more jobs or improve the economic development of any municipality. That's so that's is that, is it too early to say maybe that's a better question as to whether these initiatives where so many people are working so hard are paying off yet? Or will it take time? I think everything you said is absolutely accurate. Uh, there have been studies done so far. I think Emily had that up on one of her slides that shows um, the, the progress that you can make by having uh, culture, um, culture in, your, in your economy. Um, there's a number of stats out there that I'm sure your committees can provide that uh, show that the benefits of, of, um, of investing in culture in, when, in as far as getting jobs into your community and, and everything. So they, there's a number of statistics out there that I'm sure your committees can pull together to prove that. And that might be helpful when you go to council as well with those hard facts. Okay. Um, the, the comment about uh, the creative communities, yeah, you see in Canada at the moment the words innovation and, crea and creativity are, are uppermost almost everywhere and you know, maybe through the work of uh, Richard Florida. You're starting to see a lot of attention to, to this issue of, of will creative communities be able to bring back the jobs that we've lost through manufacturing. And, and I think it's mostly being addressed uh, in the urban centers and I think the challenge for us is going to be to see if we can make a case for that in, in the more rural environments. It's going to be a struggle, but, but at least, you know, it looks like it's, it's a possibility and that gives some hope. Our next presenter is uh, Melissa Colliver. Melissa is the Manager of Heritage and Culture Division in Norfolk County. Um, as I drove in last night um, into the city of Port, the lakes, I was struck by how uh, similar your landscape is to Norfolk County, so I didn't feel as though I was very far from home. Um, so um, I'm very pleased to be here. So prior to amalgamation, a transition team was created to develop an overall strategy for heritage and, and culture. And at the time, the heritage and culture sites that were going to become part of Norfolk County were owned and operated by various municipalities with varying degrees of financial support. I would say that despite not having a municipal cultural plan, um, Norfolk County Council does recognize um, heritage and culture as an economic driver and an important one um, to Norfolk County. We had a new GM come to um, Norfolk at the time for um, planning and economic development, and he really felt strongly that he wanted heritage and culture in his department. So they made that, that move, and I would say that that was a good move. Um, we've been there ever since, and about three years ago, the department name was changed to Development and Cultural Services to reflect the importance that culture plays in that department. So this is um, the Development and Cultural Service Department and where we sit. And we are in with Community Planning, Building and Bylaw, tourist, Tourism and FDAP, and then Heritage and Culture. And I would say that those are really good partners to have in our department. Um, we're, we're going through the process of trying to decide which uh, department is the best fit for uh, arts and culture. Um, and I'm just wondering if you could provide us with your experience and the pros and cons of being under one department versus another. Planning and economic development at the time wanted heritage and culture and, and recognized it as an economic driver for the region as well as beyond. And uh, I have no complaints about being under um, <coughs> development and cultural services. 
But could you describe the benefits of that? Um, I think we're more valued. I think there's not a, the um, um, competition for the for the funds. Um, we work well with our tourism, um, but then you have tourism too. So it, yeah, you know, that's different. I think yeah. that's the thing is being with our tourism colleagues and community planning colleagues, because our heritage committee they um, advise on. Um, planning applications that have a heritage component to it. So in terms of how we're set up, we're better placed here because the people that we interact with the most um, are, are in our, well, on our development. Maybe Evelyn yes. comment on, on that question from, from yeah. Chris. I, 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 think, I think it's best to set up the structure what's, what's best for your municipality most importantly is to ensure that those synergies are happening between all of the areas. Um, as far as, as uh, we're under community development department and so that just naturally brings together all of the groups that, that fall under our area. Does that help, Chris? Yeah, just a couple of, uh, a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, I really want to thank the, uh, the panelists. Uh, they give us a bunch of new questions to deal with task force. Uh, the structure in the three different uh, municipalities is similar but different. Uh, they use the same name for totally different uh, uh, duties. Uh, the one big thing that, that, that I'm going to have to try and define is I'm going to have to try and define before I bring it to council uh, what the word culture means. Now, I describe what my background was being, being in agriculture and Funding, but we're well looked after in those territories. Uh, in economic development, we have a way that, that looks after our agricultural communities. So I'm not worried about that. They're not my concern. My concern is I think we have to put a very small box around the word, uh, the word culture. Uh, the first thing that we as a city have to do, or we as a task force have to do, or we as a community have to do, is we have to gain recognition that we're an important part of the community. That we have to take, we have to have the city uh, identify a person to take responsibility for that. So so that's going to be one of the main recommendations coming up the task force. With the struggle that, that Pat's going to have in trying to define the word culture, it will be a struggle. Uh, you know, we can look back to what uh, Sudbury said about, uh, by, by, make, by putting four categories up, you know, identity, people, places, uh, economy, it helped them put a box around what, what they were doing. And, and you may end up with a very different box, but, but, some, but getting that, that clarity it helps a lot. Ben. I just wanted to turn around to the group because um, one, one of the things I had to do as a new person to the community was to actually read the master plan, the cultural master plan and the heritage master plan. $200,000 was spent by council on those reports. And when we started interviewing counselors in August and September of last year to understand, especially with 50% of the counselors being new, who even knew about these, it was pretty disturbing to me as a resident to realize that if all this work was sitting there, you kind of actually tapped into it. And when we talk about defining culture, the Master Cultural Plan had over 200 organizations and individuals consulted. Everything from farmers markets to art gallery to community groups to musicians, performers, writers. So we have a lot of data. And one of the things when we asked the task force to, to get established and I went to council last October is let's do our due diligence. Let's read those reports. Let's see what was in there. Uh, it's not as if this is outdated. It's not a 2007 plan. Mm -hmm. It was received, not even tabled, as I understand, when I spoke to one councillor in 2015. So we were hoping that not only will the municipality define its role in this broad area, have a staff person or a, a resource in the, in the uh, senior management of the city that volunteers like me and others can relate to. And let's do our homework and see what was done. So we it is hard to define culture, but if you have 200 in a town and a municipality of 73,000 people and over 200 organizations recently participated, there's very good reasons. So let's talk about that. Thank you. 
quite a few event, quite a few mentions were made about the links between tourism and cultural activity, and I think it's important to keep emphasizing that, especially if you want to start keep talking about economics as a driver. It's 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 the ability to make the place a destination, bring bring tourists in, bring visitors in, and start to use that as a way of augmenting uh, the cultural activity in, in an area. Um, and measurable outcomes were mentioned as a way to convince council, but it was also mentioned, and that's an important thing, is that a lot of cultural issues are, are really hard to measure. Uh, and, uh, we, we do, really do want to be outcomes oriented, but sometimes I think as uh, the gentleman at the back mentioned, you got to have a lot of faith and, and, and believe that, that you're going in the right direction sometimes without the, without the measures. Um, and I think the thing that came up constantly through this year is how significant volunteers are. And it was nice to see people putting numbers like $17 an hour, $20 an hour on the volunteer uh, uh, hours and then trying to let council know that this is, it, it may not be a, a dollar figure that you spent, but it's a dollar figure that's added enormously to the value of the community. I'm going to pass it over to Susan. say thank you to Harvey and to Evelyn and to Melissa and to Emily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd also like to take a moment to um, say some other thank yous. I mentioned at the beginning of our session together today that this is a collaboration between the task force and a roundtable committee. So I'd like you to know before you leave today who your task force members are and who the roundtable committee on the task force, the chair is Councillor Pat Dunn. Also, we have on that committee Councillor Pat O'Reilly, Councillor Rob Macklem, and Councillor Andrew Vale. David Morrison sits on that committee as a representative from the Port Lakes Arts Council board member. Uh, myself as, as well sits on that committee as a member of the uh, uh, Port Lakes Arts Council board member, and I am the vice chair as well. Tom Moore sits on that committee as a representative from the Fourth of Lakes Cultural and Heritage Network Board. He is a, a, a network. He is a, a board member on that uh, uh, network. Jim Garbett sits on that committee as a, a, a representative from Heritage Victoria, and Penny Holdem, a representative from uh, a, a business owner from the Creative Economy, sits on that board. And then we also have our um, very hard working a round table committee. And on that committee is uh, David Wesley, Andrea, and Andrea Kotos. Also on the round table committee is Pat Murphy, Diane Lister, Don Hughes, Val Barkey, Jim Garbett, and myself. Keeping us on track and keeping us doing our homework is Deborah's soul on the task force and on the committee. So many thanks, Deborah. The next, the last thing I'm going to speak to is the next steps, and I'm looking at it as two parts of homework. Um, the homework for the task force is by drawing on the examples and experiences of other municipalities that have been successful in creative economic growth through the implementation of a cultural plan, the task force will use the information presented today to advise council and staff and recommendations for the implementation of the cultural master plan and the heritage master plan. The city is in the unique position of working for one is essentially a blank slate, and that gives them the opportunity to create some real impact in the cultural sector with what they decide. I also want to leave you with the thought that I think the last next step, the piece of homework, is I'd like to present to yourselves. When you think about what culture is, what it is to our community. I like to share this thought a lot, and I'm sure many of you have heard this before. It took the creative side of somebody's brain to invent, to invent hockey. You look at a hockey stick. It's all coming from a very, very creative spot. So maybe it's a lot more inclusive than we realize, and defining it isn't as difficult as we might think it is. 
So thank you for everything, the refreshments in the back room.